So I've had the flu, so my voice is rough. Um, I had a list of books that I wanted to read this month, but I decided to switch this up. Just in the past 10 minutes, I was like, you know what? We're at the end of the year. Your goal is to read more books off of your shelves, which I have 115, 120 books that I haven't read. And to be honest, I don't know what majority of them are about. However, I am going to... So I'm going to just... I, I already had a spinner wheel with like every book I own on it. And I figure we'll have some fun. And I'll do, do, do this until I get into a reading slump. And <laughs> change my mind and go back to this stack of books over here that I want to read. So, um... Here's my wheel. There's like a ton of books. So I hope you can see that. And I'm just gonna hit spin. I have no idea what's happening here. What does that say? Oh my god. So I have no idea what this book is about because it's self-published. And here we go. Here's what we're doing. I'm I'm excited. Okay. Okay, so I'm on my phone because my camera battery is D-E-A-D. -E so, I'm reading Paternus, Rise of Gods, and I've heard a lot of buzz about this trilogy, and I'm still not quite sure what I'm reading. So, there's different viewpoints from what I can tell. This is definitely an urban fantasy. We're in the regular world, and there's some gods that have lived since the beginning of time and I believe and now they're awakening again and I don't know what's going to happen with that. I didn't read the synopsis going in so I went back when I was getting confused about what was happening. I went back and read the synopsis and how about I am 25% in about 117 pages or some, some odd in and how about Nothing in the synopsis has occurred yet. Not a single thing. So I'm like, what? Also, there's definitely, again, I I'm going to be quite honest. If I wasn't reading this, you know, for my book club purposes, I would not continue this book. I would DNF this book. Of course, we have the normal male gaze. We are fixated on boobs. And there's a part where water is dripping down her boobs. And she's got a see-through shirt. And the guy just can't keep his eyes off of her boobs. And, like, why do you why do you need to mention this? I, I don't understand. And now we've come to a part where the female protagonist works at a hospital. And her love interest works at the hospital. And... One of her co-workers comes and says that this old man, who basically is catatonic, I mean, he, like, has his eyes open, he doesn't talk, he doesn't follow commands, he doesn't do any of this. They have caught a doctor having sex with him, like, after hours. One of the security guards caught them having sex after hours. What? What? Okay. Y'all, this book gets a lot of high praise. I am not understanding. In the self-pub industry, I feel like this is one of the more popular books. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. I'm going to keep reading. And I'll let you know. Sorry about my voice. Again, we're at the end of the day. Where I've been talking most of the day. And um, I am losing my voice. Continuously. I still, I mean, I've... My voice is better than it was, actually. For a whole week, I, I had no voice. So, it's kind of come back. But, I'm going to keep reading this. I just don't know how I am how I think about this. Okay. I'll check in when I get farther in. Maybe 50% mark. We will see. So, listen. <clears throat> I've got to DNF this book. So, I am very, very confused at the amount of good reviews that 
this book has. So listen here. I went on when I decided to DNF this book. I was at 51%. I went on and onto Goodreads and read some reviews. And of course, everybody's like, oh yeah, it gets really better after the first book. Look, y'all, I'm tired of reading books that they say it gets better after the first book, especially when the first book is as terrible as this one is. So I think in the last clip, I was telling you that this woman was um, medical provider was called having sex with this catatonic half catatonic patient there of course is a reason behind that but like why do you put that in your books like the sexualness that is in this book is just outrageous and it's childish and the writing is terrible it's childish everybody's like oh yeah it gets it gets really interesting and better at the 40 percent mark listen i made it to 51 percent. i still say it was terrible like i understand that these people are gods and so sex is going to be part of what they want but it's just done in a very tacky and childish way so i had to dnf that and i'm not going to go back to it i own the whole trilogy shame on me uh, i i just own it on audio so that's fantastic but yeah i would not recommend this book i mean the later books have a very high rating and even like People that I trust have given some of the books five stars. So maybe he did get a, um, better, a better writer in the latter half. I don't know, but it was definitely not for me and it was a DNF. And so Samantha called me out about how I need to DNF some more books. So Samantha, if you're watching, look here, I DNF'd this book just for you. All right, I'll check in later when I spend to get my next book i was just um taking a break from cooking and i'll return later so i'm gonna put what i spend next you know somewhere around here here it is yeah for those that don't know i'm i'm doing a, a spin the bottle thing in, in my book club and so I got a big chunky fantasy book once again. One that was not really on my radar. Yeah, fun times. I'm now at 32% into Kings of Paradise by Richard Nail. So this is any published and <clears throat> initial thoughts are that this book is definitely feeling like a setup book. A lot of people praise this series as well, and I'm having an okay time with it. It's following three main points of view so far that I know of, and it's kind of very confusing. Let me read the tagline to you from the book. And <clears throat> the tagline is, a deformed genius plots vengeance while struggling to survive. A wastrel prince comes of age finding a power he never imagined Two worlds are destined to collide. Only one can be king. So our characters, I've read 200 pages. It's like a 600 page book. So our characters are just starting to, we're just getting to know them. We're just getting to know kind of the world. We're following Ruka, who is this, it, it's very brutal. I feel like the first chapter, he talked about killing a young man and cutting his cheek, cheeks off and, and roasting it. I don't know like that hooked me in I was like wait a minute um but then it kind of got tame from there it Ruka is kind of this boy I'm not really sure what he is but he's a de deformed boy and he's been accused of a crime and he has kind of fled and he is by himself and he's a young younger boy I think he must be in, in his teens and he's kind of just learning how to survive and he's very brutal he doesn't care he will kill you whatever and then we're following our uh prince who is fourth son of the king so he's not anywhere in line to be the king so i'm wondering how it's going to come between him being a king i'm wondering what's going to happen there but we have spent majority of our time in his point of view and so kind of figuring out the dynamics between the king and him, uh, father and son, and kind of figuring out where, where he fits in in this world. And then we have followed another girl who we met whose family was 
slaughtered by Ruka, the first main character I talked about. And so we don't know much about her. So far, we're getting a little bit more of her now. But I'm intrigued. But I, in fantasy, you often hear about middle book syndrome, but you don't hear a lot about first book being a setup book. And I think a lot of fantasies do this. Like in a fantasy series, I feel like you ha that first book has to have something to grip you to keep you reading on to the second book. And a lot of fantasy series to me don't have that. Like it's strictly just, hey, let me build the world. And then hopefully you'll keep reading on because I'll make something good happen at the end of book one. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. I am intrigued with the characters and I'm just going to continue to read and see what's going on. Um, so cross my fingers, I have 400 pages left that something good is going to happen. I am liking the characters so far, so we'll see. Okay, so I finished Kings of Paradise by Richard Nell, which is an indie published fantasy novel and I give it three stars. I know I didn't update much past my first update but I really just didn't have a lot of thoughts. This follows our main two character point of views which is Ruka who is very um it's a he has a revenge story and he like I said grips you like the first chapter he is eating a child that he just killed so if that is any indication but it really did hook me in and so if that's not for you then that's not for you but this is kind of a grim dark his part of the story is very grim dark this is a very grim world with little to no hope so you have him and his world and then you have the king the king's fourth son who knows that he's not going to really amount to anything him and his father don't get along and he's being shipped off to the military and some other things that happen there and you have his kind of story and his coming there's going to be some powers his coming of powers and, and rukas and so you have kind of some very opposite um characters here and there's a love story which i thought was done very very well i enjoyed the romance and a fantasy story yes i did and there were some steamy scenes and the steamy scenes were very realistic and very well done so kudos there um but there's a catch because there is a point of view I was really enjoying the story and then there is a point of view that comes in for a third point of view and it ruined I, I just I I zoned I had to zone out because it just did not her story just just did not interest me in the slightest and so a lot and, and the way the story is told like you may get six to eight chapters of one point of view it's not like we're switching all the time, which if you're in six to eight chapters of a point of view you don't like, it's kind of a bummer. So I overall thought this was okay. I thought it was very slow in parts. It's a very slow build. It's 600 some pages. Just if you want to read it, great. People love it. And people, there's real high praise for the entire series. And I may read the second. I may not read the second. I really don't know. I pondered this one for quite a while. I went on to YouTube and everything and on some book blogs and kind of read everybody else's thoughts on this and I'm stuck with giving it three stars but most people rank this four to five stars. Just FYI. It's just a me thing. Okay we are gonna do spin number three now and see what I get. So I got Skullduggery Pleasant, which is, I think it's a middle grade novel. I'm not quite sure, but I'm excited to actually read this. I do want a physical copy. I'm not, this is also another series. What is it that I'm starting all these series? But it's okay. It's okay. I'm having a good time and I will check back in when I have read some of Skullduggery Pleasant. Okay, so let me tell you guys about Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. I didn't update. I finished. I didn't update because I read a lot of this book while I was at the little trampoline park with my kids and so I couldn't obviously film in there. But I loved this book and I gave it five stars. And I, this book has sat on my shelves for five evers, but I don't understand why this series is not more popular. But then when I look on Goodreads, I feel like it's very popular because it has a ton of ratings and that, like this series has like 15 books at this point. 
So I'm going to continue on. I enjoyed this. I got the same feeling, like Rick Riordan um, blurb this. I got the same feeling as reading Rick Riordan's books, which I love. Percy Jackson series. I loved it. I loved these characters. This follows... Basically, our main character, Stephanie, has... Her uncle has died, and she has inherited his house. And there, she learns that there's magic in the world. And Skullduggery Pleasant exists, and he's... There's this whole world that she doesn't know about, and he's a skeleton, and he's a detective, and they have a romping good time. Which, I did think that this is very, very action-packed, which is, which is about what happens with this age range, but... This was very action-packed, so sometimes it got a little bit too much, but I love the humor in this. It was my kind of humor, and I loved this book, so highly, highly recommend. It's called Very Pleasant. So, just to recap for this week, I attempted to read Paternus Rise of Gods by Dirk Ashton, which is the first in a trilogy. I DNF'd it. I read a very large amount, like 50% of the book, and that book was just unfortunately not for me. I thought it was very childish. Some of the scenes in it I just couldn't get get over. A very sexualized book. Stuff that I feel just didn't need to be in a book. So that was into that. I read 50% then I DNF'd. The second book I read was Kings of Paradise by Richard Nell which I overall enjoyed. I gave it three stars. Of course my AC is gonna turn on and I don't feel like turning it off. So this is what's going to happen. Um, and then, of course, I read Skull Dugger Pleasant. So, woohoo! So, I will end this vlog here. And I will uh, see you guys in the next vlog. Uh, catch my next vlog to see what I spin next. I am enjoying my month so far. I am enjoying my November. And I'm happy that I had this five-star read. Alright, guys. Hope your reading is going well. Leave down below what you guys are reading. And I'll catch you next time.